Welcome back to the episode 5.15 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi Coprocessors. In this episode, we will talk about a memory traffic optimization technique important in NUMA systems. NUMA stands for Non-Uniform Memory Architecture. This term describes computing systems uh, composed of several nodes in such a way that the aggregate memory is shared between all nodes, but for each node, access to local memory is faster than access to the memory of another node. For example, servers with two-way Intel Xeon processors are numerous systems. Each processor has faster access to the memory modules that are local to it. Each processor can still access memory of other processor, and this is completely transparent to applications. However, the latency and bandwidth of remote memory is worse. Another example of NUMA systems are Intel Xeon Phi processors of the second generation, Knight's Landing. Intel has not yet revealed how memory is organized in them in relation to NUMA, but it was announced that second generation Xeon Phi will have NUMA support. Even if you do not work with a NUMA system today, it is important to make applications NUMA aware so that the code is future-proof. The key for NUMA awareness is data locality. Tiling or recursively processing your dataset may be one of the methods to achieve NUMA awareness. But there is one more optimization for NUMA systems, which is often a low-hanging fruit. This optimization is favorable first-touch allocation. In Linux, when you call malloc, you're telling the operating system that you intend to use a buffer of a certain size. However, the operating system does not create virtual memory pages during malloc. Pages are created and assigned to physical memory modules during first touch, in other words, when your program writes data to the memory for the first time. And the default allocation policy in Linux is the so-called first-touch allocation policy, which means that the NUMA node that touched a memory page first will get it allocated in its local memory. This can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what your code does. For example, if you have an array of data which you will process in parallel with multiple threads, but you first touch this array with one thread, then this entire array will be placed on the NUMA node that touched it. For instance, if we initialize the array A by a thread working on CPU 1, the entire array will end up on CPU 1. This is bad, because when we process the array with multiple threads, CPU 2 will have slow access to the data. The better solution for first touch is to first touch the array with the same parallel pattern with which you intend to process them. Then the parts of the array touched by CPU1 will end up in the memory local to CPU1, and parts touched by CPU2 will end up in memory local to CPU2. That means that often the most simple optimization that you can do for NUMA systems is to initialize the array from a parallel region rather than sequentially. Going back to our example with matrix spectrum multiplication, this plot shows the importance of first touch. In the first set of bars, the matrix A was allocated by one thread. This had a performance penalty of almost a factor of 2 on the host, which is a two-way NUMA system. In the second set of bars, we allocated matrix A from a parallel region, which was very important for performance on the host. You can see from the third set of bars that additional tweaks of the parallel pattern on first touch can improve performance by a few percent further. For more information about this example, refer to our book. At the same time, performance on our first-generation Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor was not sensitive to first-touch pattern. That is because first-generation Xeon Phi is not a NUMA system. However, as we mentioned earlier, second-generation Xeon Phi will be a NUMA system, so NUMA awareness in applications will become important. We'll post more details when the second generation is released to the public. This concludes the discussion of memory traffic optimization in this course. In our book, you can find an additional topic of memory traffic optimization, loop fusion, which essentially is also an optimization of the locality of data access in time. Usually when scalar tuning, vectorization tuning and multi-threaded optimization is done, memory traffic optimization becomes very important for performance in Intel parallel platforms. In the next two episodes, we will move on to the next performance tuning topic, which is optimization of performance in distributed memory systems. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. 
Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you in the next episode.